Folks, today on Crossing South, we have some yummy deliciousness. We hit a couple of restaurants that you do not want to miss, and it's heading to you now. You know, folks, with so many resources in the Guadalupe Valley, the wine country, being such a beautiful environment to just grow organic food, wines, and all that, you know, there's, there's new places popping up over and over, and we just find recommendations for food that's just pushing the envelope, just being healthy, being delicious, being organic, being just what this place is all about. And one such place we found that came highly recommended, and we're bringing it to you right now, is called Fuego, which means fire. So stay with us, folks. It's Crossing South. Don't go anywhere. Roxanne, you're the public relations expert here for Fuego. Tell me about this complex. How did it get its start? Pretty much it was always a dream for the family to have a Mexican hacienda, to have our horses and be able to have rooms to have our guests and family members. It was a family ranch. Yeah, it was a family ranch. It started as that and it evolved to a hotel boutique. Obviously, after having our clients here in the hotel boutique, we had to make Fuego, a restaurant, offer a place for good wine, good food. We were pleasantly surprised with the decor, just the ambiance. We can't get enough of it. We heard about the food, but we never thought it'd be this beautiful. And what can you tell us about the decoration? What was your intention? My father's vision was to put in every detail his personality. He has this hobby as an architect. So a lot of what you see here has been choices that he has made that Michelle has said, you know, this looks better like this. And the family has been oriented to putting our heart into everything you see here. So, so you've been involved in the decor? Yes. Did you, do you have any background in decoration or, or um, just your style? Definitely my style is nature. So once you're here surrounded by vineyards, by nature, you kind of want to have also that touch of organic architecture, like leave it as it is, bring that rustic touch right, to right. it. So we kind of been respecting that. What would you tell like people who've never been here, what to expect, if you could sum it up? What would you tell them? Well, first of all, it's getting um, away from the city, right? So you're able to experience that scenery of turning into the mountains. So you find yourself at this calm place to relax, to unwind. Then you have local wine, all these green areas. We have horseback riding too. If you come here with us, you'll be able to unwind, unplug, and kind of sink in the beauty, the birds tripping right now. So a little bit, you're outside, like taking a travel outside of your own place, but you're really very close. You're just across south of the border. There you go. These girls got it going on. They have a stable of horses where they offer riding lessons. A lot of owners of wineries have their horses here with right. us, and they know they're in a safe place with good food, and you, you can train in a good environment. Are right? you training them? Yes. Okay. We have our instructor that works their horses, and they come and they take lessons so they can ride well. The Valle de Guadalupe is a region that allows us to be idealistic and creative. So welcome here. Everything we do here, we strive to do it organically. And I want to show you guys all of these sugar snaps that you can try. And sugar I, snaps? Sugar snaps. And I really think it's a beautiful experience to actually eat from the land and it tastes so good and gives you good energy. So just bite it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're so sweet. Mm -hmm. This is really good. So we have carrots, we have radishes. I'm going to pluck some of them right now. We have some kale. And we also have some plants that are grown for their flowers. There's a unique satisfaction I see in the eyes of all those who are able to have a garden to plate set up. And let's see how our carrots are doing. Usually for the, for the restaurant, we like to have small. So this is a golden carrot and it came up as a two leg. And it just popped out just like that. We have different kinds of seeds that we buy to make very interesting and colorful plates. That's it folks. It's not Ralph's. <laughs> It's right here from their land. We were made to enjoy cultivating the land. Fuego takes full advantage of this as a hacienda slash oasis. As beautiful as this place is, and we didn't realize how nice it was until we got here. Yeah, it was really nice. We've heard of Fuego before through its food. That means uh -huh. that 
through you. Yeah. <laughs> You're yeah. the chef here. Yeah, it's Ta been uh, four years already. Four years? Yes. Talk to me about well, where did you learn your, your, your craft? Where uh, I was in school in, in, in Italy, in Milan, learning in a culinary institute. You're kidding, wow, that's and then so I, nice. I, then I came back to, to Tijuana, uh, had a, a restaurant for, for a few years, and then came to the Guadalupe Valley, and it's uh, been uh, four years already. I've heard a lot of good comments, a lot of good reviews about Fuego. People talk about the food. The chefs you know, in the Guadalupe Valley, or in Baja in general, the ones mm -hmm. that use local produce, you know, they're not organic because it's, it's stylish. Yeah, yeah, They're organic because yeah, that's yeah. how it is here, right? We, we, we don't even say it. If Correct. you come to the Guadalupe it's, Valley, it's, you know it's going to be organic. So that's the ingredients. How about your style? Okay, what the style, style could you make? Uh, of course, we have a Baja, Baja style. We do like a lot of uh, Mexican uh, pre-Hispanic uh, recipes. You use meats, you use vegetables, yeah, you yeah. use all the produce. But you're also including so sauces and, and, and seasonings yeah, that seasoning are typical, typically Mexican, Mexican yeah, very yeah. Mexican. And we try really hard to get the best produce that we can find. My man here, Mario Peralta. Thank you, my friend. We look forward to tasting your stuff. Yeah, of course. It's Crossing yeah. South, folks. Don't go anywhere. We're going to try the Fuego Cuisine, and it's on fire. So <laughs> stay with us. Okay, folks, so this is at... <laughs> This is as fresh as it looks. I mean, if you can see that, just zoom in there so you can appreciate this. And this is what they call in Mexico an agua chile, which agua means water, chile means uh, chili, you know, pepper, hot peppers. So it's, uh, it's basically <laughs> very spicy water. That's the agua chile. It's citrusy. Just look at how it moves. Look at how it swims and all that citrusy goodness. Mario is certainly taking advantage of the endemic products of Baja. It's all natural and it's all here for you, all put together. Oh my goodness. I'm not, I'm not too crazy about clams. I'm not the, you know, the best clam guy, but when they're ornamented, flavored, seasoned, and just complemented like this, I think I'm more, more, more into it. It's easy for you to muscle me into doing it. So let's try it. The only concern is the aguachile. It's pretty spicy because it's got habanero sauce, but I'll tell you how it is. I'll tell you if you'll be able to bear it. Okay, let's try it. Oh my goodness, it is so good. It is so delicious. You can just taste the freshness. They ain't kidding, folks. I mean, you can just feel when you're eating something that it, it feels like it's from the garden, from the orchard, from the farm, from the sea to your mouth. That's exactly how it feels. This is the Guadalupe Valley. This is what it's all about. Wow, it did not underwhelm at all. This next dish right here, if you can get into it. This is yellowtail, and look at how fat it is. I mean, can you see the ripples between there? That's fat. That means it's a very, very juicy yellowtail. So just, if you, can, if you can look at that, all the things that are there. <laughs> look at how pretty that looks. Okay. Oh my goodness. It doesn't taste like raw fish, folks. I know why this place was getting all these rave reviews. It tastes as pretty as it looks. I don't know if you can see a little flower nudged in there. You know what, we'll, we'll add another one just for good measure. There you go. And, and these flowers are there, they're in the garden. They have them in the garden, so. For someone who is very much into fried, greasy food, I am telling you, this yellow tail is simply oh, delicious. This is amazing food. Oh dear. I wanna keep going. <laughs> I'm giddy. It feels so healthy. I, I'm, I'm normally the anti-healthy. Don't give me healthy food. Just give me delicious food. This just happens to be both. Crossing South, folks, we're at Fuego and we're tasting this stuff and I'm not stopping. <laughs> and normally when you see me not stopping, listen, that's a good tip for watching this show. If you see me take more than two bites of a dish, that means I'm having a lot of fun. And this is fun. Oh my goodness. Gorditas are very typical. They're pre-Hispanic corn um, shaped patty that people normally would put you know, beans and meat on top of it and, and veggies and whatnot. But he's going even deeper than that. So the, the, the gordita patty, if you notice, it's dark. These dark things that look like mushrooms and stuff. That's fresh wheat lacoche. Wheat lacoche is that corn fungus. This is, this is just grown here, grown in the valley, grown on the premises. So it's a better wheat lacoche than what you would normally get, even in a Mexican restaurant. It's going to be messy to try this. Holy crud. Oh man, 
<laughs> just so you know, you folks probably at home are going like, well, just eat it with a fork. That's not how you eat a gordita. You have to try to bite it. Okay. I'm holding it with a fork. Let's try to get some, some cream. Let's hope it doesn't fall apart. Come on, let's get some cream in the, in the bite zone. Oh boy. My biting technique for the gordita was a disaster, but I got to taste in, and boy, it's so good. Oh my goodness. I'm telling you folks, it's fuego and it's on fire. So we've reached the portion of the competition where the main dish is brought. <laughs> These vegetables come straight from the garden. Now this is a pan seared uh, sea bass, which just looks lovely. There's some seaweed salt or, or powder. They've got this rustic multi southern chili sauce. Oh, there's a lot of different southern Mexico coastal chili peppers in this sauce right here. It's again, folks, natural products. They also have this, this golden beet right here. We'll try those as well. But let's go straight for the jugular. Let's try the sea bass. Let's get it right here where it's seared. Look at it. Just look at it. Look at the ripples there. Love how it's cooked. Nice and crunchy here. Where are you going, big boy? It's full of flavor. Very, very flavorful. The sauces just add to it, but you can tell that this piece of fish is just good all around. This is so juicy. All these, all these dishes, they just, they just feel natural. They feel incredibly natural, incredibly fresh, incredibly flavorful. There's a science to this probably because they're using all these, all these natural ingredients to add flavor instead of using artificial stuff. So this is just amazing. This is a wonderful, a wonderful dish to try. Holy smokes, I'm happy. I'm happy, folks. <laughs> Last dish, this is a pork belly on a green mole, which is uh, pumpkin seeds and it's kind of like a pipian. Uh, it's got tomatillo, that sauce, tomatillo, pumpkin seeds, and a bunch of green, uh, you know, puree stuff. So you've got the pork belly right here, which is super tender. You know what you notice that? Look at look at the the oil coming out of it. Look at that. Bam, bam, seared on top, and bam. Look at that. Ooh boy. So you've got your veggies all around. Uh, I think these are. I don't know if these are mushrooms. These are potatoes small potatoes. This is cauliflower. Arg, Igor, arg. I don't have a, a, a steak knife. Maybe I don't need it, but look, maybe this is why. It just cuts, it goes through like butter. I've tried pork belly in a few good places in Baja. So let's see how this you know, stacks up against that. This may be the best pork belly I've ever had. It literally melted in my mouth. Folks, this pork belly is amazing. <laughs> mm. Okay, so let me make a tally here. Maybe pork belly has jumped to number one. The yellowtail, number two. Clams, number three. Seared sea bass, number four. Gorditas, number five. That's, that's probably the order. So that's my, the way I would enumerate them, but they're all delicious. If you choose any of these plates, you will be well served and you will want to come and try the next ones the next day. The key to a happy finale is a good dessert. This is the ranch cream, which is what he used for the gorditas, but it's sweetened with dulce de leche, which is kind of like the Mexican fudge. And it's covered with coconut. You have these pistachios in olive oil. This just looks amazing. It looks rocking. It looks dreamy. Look at this dessert. You had a bad day? Well, guess what? It's all better now. It's all better. 
So after a delightful day at Fuego, there's no better ending than a delicious dessert like this. We hope you've enjoyed it. Stay with us, folks. More Crossing South coming your way. I have an intimate discussion with this dessert. Stay with us, folks. Fuego is taking full advantage of its privileged location and the availability of high quality ingredients to simply create. So after enjoying this delightful place called Fuego, we move from Valle de Guadalupe to the city of Ensenada. You know, folks, uh, walking in the city of Ensenada, there's a restaurant that came highly recommended. It's called Bull. And the guy that's behind the idea of this place, the guy next to me. It's Javi. How you doing, my friend? Nice to meet you. <laughs> Javi, you seem yes. like a pretty unique individual. You know, they tell me you're, you're a pretty fun guy. So we have, we have that in common. <laughs> What kind of food do you have? What's your style? People who are, are you know, looking for a nice place, you came recommended, but they didn't tell me like why it was recommended. So you tell me, talk to me about your food. What kind of food do you have? The vegetarian seafood and, and beef. Okay. And then there are the entries. And the entries, we carry a lot of risottos. Oh, very risotos, nice. Risottos. Uh, like a rice, right? Yeah, the Italian cheesy rice, rice, cheesy yeah. rice. And we try to be creative and we also play with fire. You know, with wood, a lot of uh, mesquite and so everything smoky. Oh, God. We just have to play with the freshest, freshest ingredients. I've been trying colors all over, and it, I don't know why. I think my color is the, the best. Color. The color of the so fish. So the, the fish color. Yeah, that normally people throw it away. Really? Yeah. And it's edible. It's totally edible. <laughs> you will see it. You will taste it. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. And we try to create. We have our chistorra tacos, our tank sopes. All right, folks. Well, we're gonna see what hobby stuff is all about, and we're at Bull. Bulles, however you want to say it. Like my mind wants to say bulles, even yeah, though it's bull. bull. So I have to bull. <laughs> it's crossing south, folks. Don't go anywhere. This promises to be uh, very, very good. So stay with us. Let's go play some. some, some, some Let's stuff. do it. Bulls is a game Javi picked up abroad and thought it'd be a nice theme for his restaurant. The objective of the game is to throw or roll heavy balls to a small target ball called the jack in English. But enough of this aristocratic game. Time to see what his stuff is made of. Folks, this is really exciting. I mean, what Javi's doing here, this really represents what Ba is all about. If you wanted to know, you know, the whole creativeness and innovation with cuisine that they're just going like anywhere they want, anywhere where they feel like, this represents it really well. The cilantro octopus tostada. It just looks amazing, doesn't it? Look at that. <laughs> I don't know if it's olive oil. It's a cilantro, olive. So it's super, you know, viscous, super oily, and it has so much flavor. I thought it was gonna be like a ceviche, because it looks like it. It's not grilled, so it's it's a different type of. Uh, of, of preparation for this uh, octopus, but it is so good. This little tostada is so good. Holy smokes. The food tastes amazingly fresh. You know, Ensenada, they should have, they should be specialists in seafood. Ensenada is a poor town. So I'm not surprised that I'm tasting the freshness and the goodness of this dish right here in this city. This, 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 is, this is definitely a star uh, uh, to, to put folks. I mean, I'm, I'm just getting started. I don't know how the segment's gonna go after this, but just on the very first try, very first dish, I'm already excited. And sometimes, you know, it takes me a little bit before I get to the one that I like, but this is amazing. This, this little tostada. I hope, I hope the rest is not a letdown, but so far I'm doing really good. Man, this was really good. Okay, so this is pretty interesting. This is what Javi was talking about, the fish collar. He says that most people throw this stuff away. This is the collar of the fish. Let's grab a little piece of that. It looks tender. So let me just try the fish alone with its fried goodness, all crunchy. Look at that. Just look at that. People throw this away. And he's saying like, it's one of the best, best things of the fish. Let's try it alone before we do build a little taco here. Mm, oh my. He's got these little, uh, almost fried tortillas, like a, like a taco dorado kind of thing. 
You've got some pico de gallo, which is always veggie goodness. You've got some avocado. You want your omegas. You want your brain food. Avocado's that, folks. And you know, Mexicans, Mexicans eat so much avocado. So, I mean, mental health has to be pretty, pretty, pretty good in Mexico. I mean, most dishes, it's, it's a very avocado rich cuisine. It's, it's completely linked to brain health. So let's continue in that avocado goodness with this fish collar taco. Look at how beautiful that looks. Just <laughs> let your eyes feast while my mouth does the thing. Simply heavenly folks. This is amazing. I mean, it is not lost on me, our natural capacity to enjoy the flavors of this earth. I mean, think of it. It does nothing to advance our survival. Food could be nutritious and tasteless, but it isn't. Okay, so this dish, it not only looks amazing, it's really not fair because I love bone marrow. Charred goodness. Look at that. You cut into it. Look at the oiliness. You just have to dig for the treasure. Look at that. If you come from a non-bone marrow eating culture, this is your opportunity to grow. Look, we put some, let me put some veggies first. People put them afterwards, but I'm a rebel sometimes. Let's start with the veggies right here. So look at that. Look at that, folks. Just check it out. Oh my goodness. Would you see that? I'm, I'm excited. This is, this, is, this is all good fat. Don't think it's bad. Oh my goodness. It is so good. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, this is a little trick my mom taught me. When eating bone marrow, put a little bit of salt in it. Just a little, just a tad, a tad of salt in it. Then you put some lime or lemon, whatever you got, citrusy. And somehow that just enhances the flavor of the bone marrow. This is how it looks before I start. This is how it looks afterwards. Jorge, Jorge happy. Jorge good. Bone <laughs> marrow. Octopus tostada. Fish collar. Good. <laughs> then when you're done, you know, you can go into caveman style, like, a rum, a rum, amma. <laughs> you go into Flintstones mode. It's so awesome. This is so awesome. Javi has created a space where he entertains both patrons and his personal friends. Ensenada and Baja are all the better for it. The chistorra tacos, is that what I was telling you? Mmm. I come to Ensenada expecting to eat what I started with, which is seafood, but I'm pleasantly surprised by this chistorra. This is really good. Well, folks, if loving Baja is wrong, then I don't want to be right. I'm telling you, this movement, this food, these people, they're making Baja what it is, and we're so happy to be a part of it. We hope you enjoyed the show, folks. We'll see you next time. Take care. So after getting to know incredibly delicious and original food in the Valle de Guadalupe and Ensenada and meeting the people behind it all, we leave kicking and screaming, counting the time till the next time we cross south. Like to know more about the places you've just seen? Maps, videos, podcasts, and more at CrossingSouth.com. We also do Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.